It's the last day of the Kumara harvest at a farm on the outskirts of Dargaville, and time to celebrate after losing 99% of their crop last season. RNZ's Northland reporter Peter de Graaf caught up with Dunsmore Gardens' Doug Nilsson as the final crop for the year was being brought in. And he got his boots muddy too. You got half your, sorry, I've stolen half yeah, your paddock on yeah, my boots, man. That's right, as long as Kumara like it, that's great. Right. Last season was a shocker. Um, Cyclone Gable, as you know, was just the last straw in a, in a really bad growing year. Come off the back of a record wet winter, really wet, difficult planting season, which most growers, ourselves included, were lucky to get about 67% of their normal crop planted. And then wet summer, Cyclone Howl, Cyclone Gable was just the last straw. We lost 99% of our crop. A lot of other growers lost a lot. Um, some lost all of it and some lost 60-70%. So a few growers supplied the whole industry last year, um, but most growers are suffering and still suffering financially now, even though 12 months later we've got crops pretty much in the shed. We're finishing today, so we're completely opposite this year, this season. It's been a pretty good growing year. Yields have been pretty good, but a bit lighter than average. Um, but we've had a tremendously um, good weather and good digging conditions for harvest. So we're looking forward to having a beer tonight after we finish. Shed's full of nice coomers, really good quality this year. So um, hopefully we can get some good quality coomers out to our uh, consumers this year. We plant over about 8 to 10 weeks. We grow on heavy alluvial corporate clay soils. So if you get rain shortly after you've planted, that clay can set hard again. And that will affect your shapes and your yields at a later date but this year our timing was perfect all the way through and just nice shaped coomeras minimal damage from um, skinning from hard soil and that so yeah it was complete opposite last year it's probably the best harvest i reckon i've had in probably 20 years good reliable crew of workers this year as well so that's made it a lot easier because that's always a stressful thing we use probably around 50 staff through the harvest um, a mix of rsc boys from vanuatu and we've got a forestry group here as well, we've got a, a Fijian contingent in there on a working scheme and made up a lot of other locals. We don't generally use too many backpackers unless we have to. It's by and large, the locals that we've had this year have been pretty reliable, pretty pretty good and with the overseas workers um, filling the gaps, it's been yeah, pretty much stress-free labour-wise. Um, a lot of our boys that return back to the islands, they spend a huge amount of money here taking goods back home. We've just finished packing up a container and a bit of stuff for the 13 of them this year going back. It also affects our trucking firms that cart the coomers, nothing to cart. The, the, our local bin builder, he had a terrible year last year because nobody was building bins. Our kite procumera, you know, short season there, all the staff are out of work, affects the processes, proper crisps, Mr Chips, those sorts of guys. So it's a, it's a snowball effect down the line. The accommodation where we're sitting here was, it was had about a metre of water through it. So that took till Christmas time this year to get them back into here. That's been the one bugbear, the time it takes before you can do anything, waiting for insurance. We still haven't been fully paid out. You know, within weeks of the flooding going through, we should have been able to start doing some remedial work on our own part, getting ready, but you can't do anything until insurance gives you the go-ahead. We had builders, we had plumbers, we had plasterers, painters sort of all sort of lined up in there quite a time of the year that, that they could have done some indoor work, but yeah, they couldn't do anything. And then the spring came when we needed them, when we finally got the go-ahead, they were all flat stick building houses outside again as well. So, yeah, that was a frustrating thing overall. Prior to the disaster last year, the year before we lost money on our crop and the year before that was barely break-even prices. So we'd financially our resilience had, had ebbed away for two years and then this was just another third year in a row, really when you're in, a, you're in your financial uh, situation is at its worst. So you see, for the last 24 months we've been trading at a loss so hopefully going forward we'll be cash positive going soon so we've had to borrow heavily this last year to put our crop in the ground it's not just going to be paid off in a year or two and depending on the, re the returns we've got no guarantee what we'll get for Coomera we don't set the price we get what we're told basically <laughs> so you know it could be five years it could be ten years depending on the returns over the coming years so it's you know it's a, it's a major setback financially the fact that I've got sheds full of Coomeras again now and um, hopefully going to have cash flow, but it's still a question mark what we'll receive for the Coomeras, whether we can start paying back some debt. We're thankful that we've been able to get um, lower interest rates through the um, flood relief scheme. Um, so that's been a big help there if we're paying 8% 
uh, interests that was sort of going to be making it difficult. So we're hoping for a good season this year and a pretty reasonable one next year so that when those interest rates run out and we sort of got to pay that money back, we're hopefully we're in a position that we can. I'd like to thank our staff, I suppose, as much as any for, for sticking with us. Last year, nobody managed to get a pay rise this year, so they had to wait 12 months for some back pay and, and uh, pay increases this year. So our full-time staff are stuck with that and worked hard, and hopefully we can get good prices and they can get rewards in that as well. Also, our consumers were sticking by, because I know last season they had some pretty ordinary coomers getting out into the market. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't put them off and they'll be back. Also, the processors have also had to, you know, struggle along with the, the fresh market countdowns and those guys not having adequate supply. So it's been tough for them to get through as well without trying to lose their markets because if they can't supply, they're in jeopardy of losing it. We're apt to be able to hopefully meet all their demands again for the, now and in the future. Doug Nilsson of Dunsmore Gardens, Kumara Growers near Dargaville. He was talking to Peter DeGraff.